Okay, so what I did now was I disabled ASIO. Uh, so I put primary sound driver. Usually you have to like close FL Studio and reopen it. And like I said before, sometimes you have to disable and re-enable your uh, playback devices to get shit to work. Um, that's just stuff you're just going to figure out on your own as you start to use it. The reason why you want the ASIO drivers, though, is like I, sh like, um, like I was saying before, when you when you use ASIO drivers, since it's all like uh, digital, it's it plays back. There's no latency, so if you watch like my playback up here, it's not as smooth. It, like it's more jumpy. See, so it's not as good of a uh, for for music production you know you want the low latency cuz sometimes you're getting down into like milliseconds on sounds interacting with each other so you really need low latency there uh the other thing is i've noticed um when you're using asio drivers you can support a lot more stuff in your project like you can support you know 10, 12, 15 tracks and, you know, 16 different mixer channels and, uh, you know, a bunch of different VSTs and everything. Um, the ASIO drivers seem to just be stronger, lower latency, just all around better. So when you're doing your actual music production, you definitely want to be on the ASIO drivers. Since I can't figure out how to record and have ASIO playing at the same time, I found a couple paid solutions around that, but I'm not going to pay money for it, so... Um, and I might be able to use like a hardware solution, but I don't have any of that right now, so. Um, fuck. Oh, dude, camel cigarettes. Nice. Uh, anyway, so what was the other thing I was going to go over? Um, let me ask right now. Got this guy. Uh, what's his name? Fuck, he's not fine. automation what was the other thing fuck I can't remember uh, well anyway let's just go through and I'm just gonna make a beat I guess from start to finish and then I'll just cut it up and we'll see I'll go over some bits as I'm doing it so usually the first thing I do is I'll either add a an instrument or I'll grab something to sample. Depends on if I want to make a sample beat or not. Hmm. Fuck. <clears throat> low energy, low energy. I guess I'll just start with a sample. What's something I want to sample? Hmm. this computer for love baby robot it's baby robot Thank you. 
that it? Just the whole song? Man, the 80s were a crazy time. Might even be the 70s. I like that. So I don't I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I don't have anything like planned out in advance. Um, I don't know why I did that. Just to force a habit. Uh, what I'm gonna do now that I have that, I'll probably throw it into fucking where is it? Piece of shit. Granulizer. Here we go. Drag and drop, baby. Granulizer. I'm gonna go in the sample tab here. And that was about two beats, I think. Not one bar. side it's really good for uh, distortion and if you ever if you ever distort something no I just use a preset version there probably gonna make it sharper let's see if it sounds sharper Turn the gain up. <laughs> Usually, if you ever uh, distort something, you wanna you're gonna wanna compress it as well. So I just go through here, choose a preset I like. That's another good one. Fruity Free Filter is really, really good. Um, I usually turn the quantizing down a bit because quantized shit sounds bad in my opinion. Um, this could be good. This could be good. Let's see. So this is Fruity Granulizer. Um, this knob here is for grain spacing. Uh, what granulizers do in general is they sort of uh, they sort of turn the waveform into sort of like um, well grains. They granulize it, and you can choose to stretch those grains out from one another, and then also you can do wave spacing here which will sort of make them overlap with each other. I guess it's easier shown than said for me. So the attack is useful. Um, the attack will decide
this is on anything in general. Um, so you're going to have to learn ADSR if you're going to do music production. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Uh, and if you listen to... Fuck, what's that band's name? Mm, fuck, I'm going to have to Google it. Simeon Mobile Disco, yeah, Simeon Mobile Disco. They have a, an album called Tech Decay Sustain Release. Now that's not really related to this at all, but I like Simeon Mobile Disco's music, even though they're probably gay as hell. Uh, but Attack Decay Sustain Release, that's gonna be your, your that's gonna be used in a lot of different um, aspects of music production. I think Hold is basically the same thing as Sustain. Uh, and you can see those here in the insert as well. You can see attack, hold, decay, sustain, release. So I guess hold and sustain aren't quite the same thing. Hold is the top part here. Sustain is the sort of trailing note here. Release is the tail end here. Decay is, I guess, the part right above the trail there. Attack here. Um, another thing you're going to want to do if you're, if you're putting a sample into an instrument like this and you're going to put it into a pattern um, you'll notice a lot of times, like, the length of the bar won't necessarily match the length of the sound playing. Like, it'll trail off after the bar ends or, it, like, won't quite start on time. Easiest way to fix that, click on this, and whatever, whatever you're in, whether it's granulizer or harmer, you can do the same thing in harmer. Um, so what you do is you can just drag drop this in harmer. Um, what what you got to do is click this and go in. Um, I don't know where to do an armor. It's like yeah, the envelope. Uh, change the attack here. Just change the attack. Um, I don't really do this in armor that often. That's why I'm fucking it up right now. But you could figure it out. You 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 could figure it out. Oh, just drag it. Okay. Yeah. So you can change the attack here in Harmer. Now it now it it like responds as soon as I hit the key. So that's cool. Um, any other VSTs? What you're gonna do is go in to the Instrument Properties tab, go to the Volume and change the attack, just put it all the way at the bottom. This will make it so it lasts. Like it'll loop better because the attack is right away instead of like way the fuck over here. So at the beginning of each loop, instead of like, you know, instead of like, it's gonna loop through this, this uh, envelope basically. So, you know, if, you're, if your loop is starting and then it builds up and then it holds for a little bit and then goes down, it's going to loop and come back here and it's going to have to start all over again. Set the attack to nothing, it's just doing this um, and it makes it more seamless. Uh, this is also where you can do LFOs if you wanted to do like shitty dubstep, which I don't know why you would want to do that in 2016, but you know, maybe. Um, you don't have to do just dubstep with LFOs, but you know, that's the most common use case, I guess. Here's where you would do your LFO changing. And of course you could right click the knobs here, create an automation clip, and then fuck with them as you see fit. So you see here it'll change based on the automation clip. We're not going to be doing LFOs though, but I just want to point it out. So what else can we do here? What I'm trying to do right now is find a good... The way I like to do it is <clears throat> I like to find a good main loop and then uh, build my intro and breakdown parts around that. So for this guy, I'm trying to find, I'm going to reset these. I'm trying to find a way to make it sound good without any, um, effects, I guess, on it. So let's see. Or rather, not with not without any effects, but rather I'm trying to find a good compression and filtering and such for it to play sort of at its at its main loop. So I'll show you what I'm talking about later and it'll make more sense probably. This guy could probably use some more reverb. 
I like the four strings one. Usually I change the decay. I just, I don't really care here. I like to low cut it a lot usually. Change the dryness, change the reverb. Always, I always make my reverb quieter. It just sounds better. So that's not gonna be my main loop, but that'll probably be my intro. So what I'm gonna do is make another pattern here for my main loop. So what I need to do, since I want this one muted in the intro, right click it, create an automation clip, this one needs to be silent. So drag these down. Okay. And I want these to turn off after the intro is done, so I'll leave them up for now. Uh, I want the intro to last for this section here, which is four bars, I guess. Um, so I'm drag these out a bit. These ones need to turn off right here. Okay, oops, and that happens all the time. You're always gonna get that and it sucks. The easiest way I found is um, if you like kind of start over here a little bit, right click and then just drag it down. Uh, this guy needs to turn on after four bars, so he'll be here. Uh, what I usually like to do is make one stand out like that and then what I'll do here is I'll just cut these all because I don't need them. I don't need them. So let's see here. I might not want them to go all the way off, so I'm going to try to drag them up just a little bit, maybe like 10, 20% or so. Yeah, 
sounds good, I guess. Um, <clears throat> what else? So, we have them, four bars, that's where they're going. Uh, what I also like to do is, for organization, uh, if you hit Alt-T on a certain spot, Alt-T, you can make a marker, and we can say, I don't know, just main, whatever, and drag it over here. Then that way we don't have to keep scrolling down to see where this shit ends. I always take my automation clips and just move them way down to the bottom. I want them out of my way. I don't care about them. Um, so this is where we need the big shit to come in. Um, so we can just do like... I'll just do like 808 stuff, I guess. Kick. Let's see. Knock is a good one. Yeah, I'll do knock this time. Uh, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a stickler, so I always drag shit over to make it perfect like that. Um, I want this one <clears throat> to be about halfway between here. I want it to be pretty sudden. I want it to be sudden. So let's see here. Eh, maybe that's too sudden. Maybe actually I want it not sudden. So the kick sounds bad right now. Put the kick on its own mixture track. And um, here's what I normally do with a kick. Take the mid frequencies up, move them over to the low end. So your low end's gonna be peaking a lot more. Um, it's gonna give it a nice deeper, bassier sound. I usually go into parametric EQ2 and give it a kick here and sometimes I'll mess with this stuff here, drag this out a bit, maybe maybe I want the mids a little lower. I definitely, I usually want the highs lower than normal. Uh, I usually go into Maximus. I throw Maximus on a lot of different mixer tracks. Punchy drums, maybe, is, punchy drums is usually good. A lot of times what I'll do too is free filter, and I'll bring the frequency way, way down in the quantizer. I might not do it on this one, but... Also, every time I have a kick default, I'm putting Fruity P controller, unmute that, uh, turn the volume down a bit, and the, what is this, tension? I guess this is tension. Um, <clears throat> peak controller, of course, I'm using as side chaining. So this is called side chaining. Uh, right click the volume slider on the thing you want to side chain, link to controller, for your internal controller, select peak control of the kick, peak plus LFO. Uh, bring, drop down the mapping formula, choose inverted, and then negative 0.2, except. If you're wanting to sidechain multiple mixer tracks, you can do that. Right click, link to controller. Um, choose your thing again. You'll notice up here, this turns red. Don't click this because if you click remove conflicts it's going to undo your other mixture tracks you don't want to remove conflicts just keep the conflicts that's fine uh, in this case we're not actually linking it I'm just showing you so, let's just... so it's a little too low so I'm going to change the volume up here more I think the kick itself is just too quiet, so I'm gonna go in here and change the volume. It's probably the fruity filter that makes it too quiet. change in the filter from like 104 to 250 all of a sudden the the sound of the kick is just way more so I don't need the volume up as much anymore 
uh, the fruity filter here is is it's really powerful and if you set the frequency here it's basically like a hard limiter it's only going to allow sounds within that 251 hertz frequency range since that's what it's set to right now to pass through so it's, it's pretty good Let's see if i set it all the way up here Also put a delay on this so I like to use delay 2 and then I just scroll through here one two three stereo effect and then I'll turn that down a little bit that's good so got a kick and now we need a snare In this case, a clap. A clap is fine too. Uh, I usually do the same mix on every clap. What I do, or snare, um, I usually turn the high up a little bit, go into Fudy Parametric EQ number one, not the number two one. Presets, snare drum enhance, that's a really good one. I don't know what this one does, because it only, it only changes these knobs a little bit. Man, it changes some of these down here a little bit. But it always makes it like way louder. So I'll do that and I usually do a reverb. Let me put it for strings. Turn the reverb down a bit though. Whew. So that's already good. I don't need to do anything else with that. If I was going to put Maximus on this, I would put either New York compression or one of the punchy drums. See, this is why this is why the punchy drums are so good. Here, here's the clap without the punchy drums. And here it is with the punchy drums. It just I don't know. You know, I just really like it. So here's another thing I like to do is like um, a kick roll, I guess. Not many people do this, but I really like it. Well, I guess a lot of people do this. I don't know. Anyway. <clears throat> so that's fast. And I got to go fast. But here's what I'm going to do. Check this out. Grab this little area here. Right click on the volume, create an automation clip. That's gonna restrict it to here, which is perfect. I don't have to fuck around dragging it around and shit. Volume slider, boom. Just leave it like that.
is a little, it's really washed out, but it is affecting the slider here. Um, so what I also do usually to give a nicer fill is of course I'll put a, another drum loop sort of beneath what I've built here. And um, you can use old break beats that are sampled from like 70s songs. This one's probably my favorite. Under my break beats folder, I go to Green Barrett. I'm probably not gonna use Green Barrett on this one, but I'm just saying in general, I really like Green Barrett. I'll, of course, you need the time to match, so I set it to two bars, normalize it, let's see. <laughs> to also actually use Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse has some good loops. really good though. Put Maximus and I'll probably put New York Impression. <laughs> So really quickly what I did was I put the low and the mid down and then I dragged the mid over to create this envelope which really basically gets rid of the lows and then I turned the highs up a little bit more. Uh, as far as the mixing goes I just put Maximus on it. I could have just turned the volume up but you know I'm an asshole so. Um, some delay, some reverb, that's pretty much it. <laughs> because it's kind of fucky like good job dead mouse but you know that's not what i want so stereo shaper is another good one you should use a lot um this one i just put to the a side preset so it's going to take out the sides and it's going to be all fucked up anyway <laughs> Fucky. 
there, there's a million different ways to make 808 sound good, and I'm not going to go into any of them. So, there you go. Just have to figure it out yourself. Sound. Oh, fuck. Sound good is a um, piece of shit. You shouldn't use it. Of course, you shouldn't use Maximus either, but I use Maximus all the time. Um, and of course, you know, I'm being really lazy right now and using a lot of presets in my actual songs. I don't, I spend more time tweaking shit and I don't use presets really at all. You want to avoid using presets wherever you can. If you spend a lot of time in uh, Fruity Loops, you're going to start to recognize sounds a lot. So when you hear other people's shit on SoundCloud and you recognize that they're using like a Maximus preset, you're going to laugh at them and you're going to call them gay and that's going to hurt their feelings. So if you want to be good at uh, Fruity Loops, you need to not use presets. That being said, I'm using presets. I use them a lot. I'm really lazy. And also what I usually do is I just choose a preset and then tweak it a little bit to get it where I want it. So just, uh, you know, just some advice from me. See, this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. See how the sound just like keeps going on forever and ever. Like I just hit the key once and it just keeps going. I don't want that, so insert, volume, attack, down. You can even change the release down. See? Now it only goes when I click the key. If I hold the key down, it's good. Now if I change the attack, That's it. That's, I'm not going to work on this anymore because this is not a good song. And I don't like it. And I won't be saving a file of it. But uh, it's just for tutorial and for example and showing you. Um, so, that I remembered as I was working on this. The other things my friend wanted me to show him besides automation clips was um, mixing and mastering. So mixing is the shit that I just did. Mixing is what you want to do all the time. Any, anything you add, you're going to want to add it to its own mixer track. So you just you make sure that you have a green light next to it here. You go over in your mixer channel here. Hit Control L. That'll link it to its own mixer track. So this guy is on number one. You can also change them in here. You know, you can drag, you can move them around here. I want this one to be on number four, though. Um, and then on each different mixer track, you put your different um, effects and whatnot. Um, internally there. Um, 
Mastering is what you do usually, typically. This is going back for, I don't know, probably 100 years. Probably since whenever they invented, like, digital recording equipment. Maybe even when they had analog recording equipment, they did this. I don't know. Um, but typically, the way it works is you mix first, and then you master. Mastering comes at the end. Mastering is when you take all of the sounds and make them work together. I'm not going to go really in depth on mastering here because mastering is its whole own thing. You could spend probably like a whole semester at college learning how to do beautifully, Mwah. but basically, yeah, you go through, and I like to mix as I'm working on the song. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people won't do any of the shit that I did. They'll just put, they'll put together the patterns and everything first. I don't worry about that because first of all, I don't know anything about music theory or scales and I don't have pitch perfect hearing like orange beef and you know I don't know how to do any of this shit really so I'm not going to focus on the patterns if I don't know what the hell I'm doing so what I do is I just focus on making things sound you know good or nice or whatever and the best and easiest way for me to do that is to just mix it as I'm working on it I like to hear what it's going to sound like as it's finished as I'm working on it and that's also one of the greatest strengths of FL Studio in general is it's so quick and it's so easy to do that you can do that while you're working on it. Like this isn't like Ableton. Like Able and in, in, in Ableton mixing and all that is like a pain in the ass. So you don't you do it at the end and you know, it's shit. That's why I use FL Studio to begin with. FL Studio is great. I know a lot of like uh, big name producers are starting to use FL Studio now and they're getting like, you know, top 10 DJ tracks or whatever and uh, they're all shit, but I don't care. Um, I know a lot of other big name producers uh, say that they'll use FL Studio to sort of sketch out an idea and then they'll work on it, you know, later in their own shit. Because um, that's that's the strength of FL Studio is it's quick. You can just quickly sit down and make some shit in like five minutes. Um, that's what makes it so beautiful. Mwah. But of course, the longer you spend on a track, you know, typically the better it's going to sound because it's going to be more complex. And humans like to hear, you know, complexity in their music, whether it be through texture or atmosphere or actual technical complexity like Ingve Malmsteen's guitar playing or something like that. You know, I'm I mean I'm not I'm not a musician in the sense of Ingve or or going back to the classics, you know, I'm not a Paganini or or Bach or Vivaldi or anything like that. Or Chopin, I can't, uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about scales or uh, the theory of music. There's this thing called like the um, the fifths, the theory of fifths or the theory of thirds or something like that. And it's a way of like building notes in a, in a, a pattern um, that sounds like resonantly good to human ears. Uh, basically, if you get into music theory, you find that there's really, there's it's all very formulaic. Like there's a very strict formula that you just follow and you'll pump out you know amazing good sounding popular music and you can become the next Katy Perry or whatever but uh I don't know I mean that's not what I'm about that's not what I like to do I just like to do shit that I think sounds cool you do whatever you want to do my man right um anyway enough of my spiel <laughs> oh I got a schmear with my spiel oh Steinberg oi um, anyway, uh, mastering comes at the end. So usually what I do, a really good mastering tool, especially if you're extremely lazy like me, get yourself an Isotope Ozone uh, series of plugins. Uh, load up Isotope Ozone 6, for example. Check this out. It's amazing. So we got here. This is without any presets.
supposed to do and what will get you laughed out of the YouTube producer community is you're not supposed to put like a limiter and a compressor on the master track. Um, you don't, you're not supposed to do that. Um, a limiter maybe, maybe I could see you getting away with that if it's not too much. Uh, like for example, if we put, I think I have one master limiter scuff. Like I went through and made all this shit. this preset it was for a very specific use case where I had a ridiculous amount of compression going on in this one song um, and I didn't want it to be peaking and varying a whole bunch um, but for this I'm gonna I'm not gonna use it shit so you don't you typically don't want to put limiters and compressors on the the master because what it's do what you do since you're since the whole point of a compressor or a limiter is to only allow certain uh, frequencies to pass through when you put a limiter or compressor on the master ch mix channel you're you're neutering those frequencies across all of your channels and like you don't know if your snare drum's hitting in the 1600 kilohertz range or 16,000 or whatever uh, you know and and maybe that's the part of the snare drum that sounds really good you're putting a compressor on your ma master channel and you you just neutered that snare drum and then now it sounds flat and it doesn't pop you know it doesn't sound good Basically, so the master channel you want to basically make things louder without uh, clipping because you don't want to clip. Clipping is bad. Um, clipping is, of course, when your volume is above the red line here. So you don't want like stuff on your master to be going above this like red line. Basically, you don't want stuff to clip, but you want it to be as loud as possible to get up to that. And you also don't want it to be, I guess, normalized or sort of you know smushed together like you need to have loudness but you need to have like variance in the frequencies that are coming through and in that loudness um i can't really think of a good way to show you right now maybe if i find like some old project or something i can show you a better example but uh you know just just if you just sit down and think about it for like 10 minutes i mean it's really obvious and it makes a ton of sense it's all common sense so it's it's really not a difficult concept to get um let's open gay as hell basically i don't know what's in this but let's, let's it's gay as hell so maybe not the best example but you know mm, yeah mastering i can't think of what else to say right now What is this? What's please? Actually, here's a good example. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you side by side. Please unmastered. Turn those back on, export, and I'm going to do these mastered. What are these fucking chuckleheads talking about? These chuckle fucking knuckleheads. Knuckle chucking fucking heads. Okay, um, let's see here, import, master, bam, sample, master, bam. So, you see here, unmastered, it, uh, I don't know why these are different times, that doesn't make any sense. Let's just see. Cheeseburger in paradise, paradise, heaven on earth with an onion slice. 
So you see, unmastered is the. I'm just gonna. I'll make this even easier. Red. Blue. Purple. Whatever. Um, unmastered is the red one up here, and mastered is the purple one down here. So you can tell there's there's a direct difference on the on the waveforms here. Mastered, it's it's a little more, you know, clumped together. I guess it's it's glued together is the term I prefer to use. You know, I like the word glue a lot. Um, but it's just gonna you know, it's gonna sound better. The unmastered looks like it's clipping almost just in the waveform. Like you can almost see where it's hitting the sides here. Pretty cool. But if you listen to the difference of the two. I just wanted to see what they sound like together. Anyway, here's Unmastered. kick drum is like muddy and it just sort of you know it just sort of thuds like bleh, but you know on the mastered version it, it really hits you know it really punches you more and uh, the snare drum is like nice and bright and crisp and it just sort of you know it resonates throughout the track more um this is this is the sort of thing that you know if you start getting into music production and using FL Studio a lot you're going to learn all of these words and they're all really gay and you are going to become a gay person but that is okay my friend because you will make the sounds and they will sound really good and I would like to listen to them so I don't know if this has been helpful at all um, I feel like I've just kind of rambled for 20 minutes but maybe just maybe this could change your life.